I mute it? Hi, I think I can see we've got some people here already. Yeah, we have. Let's um Right, so please bear with me. This is the first time that um I've used TeamViewer in a long time and it's changed. So right, we're recording. I'm going to display this monitor. Okay, hi. Would anyone like to say hello? I just want to check you can hear me. Um, I'm not sure if you have your microphones um, muted, but just want to check that uh, I'm being heard. Okay, let me just um So Alan, I'm just going to um <clears throat> write you a chat. Just want to confirm you can hear me. Perhaps no one's here yet. I'm going to get set up. Hi, Melissa. Can I just check that you can hear me? Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so my only concern is if my audio is coming over. Hey, John, this is Jeff Hare. I hear the audio just fine. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I know I'm here a little bit early, but uh, I've not used TeamViewer for quite some time unless it's been in a, a meeting put together by somebody else. So. Um, it's been a bit of a practice session uh, this afternoon. All looks okay. So good that you can hear me. Um, yeah. The only the only da um, trick really is if you're going to use that link that you sent out, um, they probably just need to do the go to go dot teamviewer dot com and then in the uh, the ID the entire link you can get an error on. Okay. So what's my easiest way to help people? Post something into the forum. Um, 
probably. That's probably it. So you gave out the, the full link. If you stop at the go.teamviewer.com link. Okay, the meeting two seconds. ID is fine. And it will come up and ask you, just leave the M out of the meeting ID, I think. Uh, okay, so. Um... Or, or just make sure that they use it. Come up pre-populated with an M. Right, so just to um, clarify, I, I want to take out the HTTPS and the um, colon forward slash forward slash. I want from go.teamviewer everything that's after that. Well, you actually want everything up to the dot com. Okay, nice. so two secs. So I'm going to post in the chat. So actually, let me post. I'll it. post the whole link. So if I copy that link, then the HTTPS, just go Team Viewer, and then they use the meeting ID. Yeah. Right. Thank that, you. That, and then th they will still have had to have downloaded Team Viewer because it's going to try ask you to launch Team Viewer at that point. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to post. Um, so I, I work with multiple monitors here. So <laughs> if it looks like I'm not paying attention, I just want to get the right post. Actually, what? V. Okay, so I've posted as a new post, and I'm just going to scroll down to the other post. And um, so, thanks for your help. Oh sure. When I did the MFA presentation a number of years ago, I sort of made sure I was um, well reversed, uh, well rehearsed. Um, Here's a link for those struggling. I'm of a generation where I'm a one finger typist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm okay unless I'm looking at the, um, if I'm watching what I'm doing. Uh, here's the link for those struggling. Yeah, and you might want to edit that post that you just put up there and just add below it the, um, you know, use the three dots and then just add in the uh, meeting ID so that everybody has it all in that one. That one post. So just going to copy the meeting ID. So that's the M M O three two two six copy. Oh wow! Only five oh. participants are allowed to join. Um, so I'm guessing I need the paid version, right? They hadn't made that clear beforehand. Well, that's going to be a real issue. Um, let me just check something. Um, so I can upgrade. There was no warning of this. I tried with um, Facebook uh, yesterday, but the, the video quality that was recorded was very poor. Yeah, I, w I watched that. Looks like there's... Well, it's quite expensive, isn't it, for a yeah. one yeah, seat, it's... one session. Um, <clears throat> I guess I record this. Recording's on. Right, I feel like I'm letting people down now. <clears throat> one of the intentions of doing this is um, there's probably a lot of us on here that would like to share, and perhaps if we work to a format that works, um, it's probably something that we can all do now and then. Yes. Number we just business. need to find the it's right format right. that's, that's going to work for us all. Right. It looks like even Teams, even the expensive version, is only good for uh, up to 25 participants. 
Okay, so there must be a way around this. Obviously, I can switch to Facebook, but the quality is not going to be very good. Um, um, with recording, is probably going to be the best option. Okay, so oh God, I feel, I've had people telling me they're getting up at 2 in the morning in Australia. Uh. <laughs> um, you can't pay on a one-time basis, can you? Pay? A single Let's user. See. I'm just going to see if I can um, if I can just purchase for the month, then um, I'll, I'll do that. And you've got to pay for the whole year, so it's around about six hundred dollars with tax and everything. And that's probably only still good for twenty-five people if you choose the highest level plan. Okay. Um, obviously, everybody else can hear this. I guess it's in the meeting, so um, it's good that you're all here. Um. I, I probably need to go back in and post something in the forum and then come over and join you. So unless anybody else has any ideas, but. Um, I think a Zoom webinar is probably going to be the, the most effective way to do that. I think you can do it free for up to 100 people. The only question is, what's the uh, video resolution? But I've been using it a bit and the resolution is quite good. OK, a lot of people have asked if. Um, I can record this, and I know that I, I've tried this, and the um, definition was quite high. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna write something in the forum. I'm gonna, obviously gonna, going to apologise, but we're recording this. Um, I, I'd, I'd come across nothing that said there was a limitation on the number of users. So um, yeah, it doesn't appear there's any way around this. Right. So if we all agree, oh, you agree, Jeff? I think I'd just go and write something in the forum. Make my apologies. I've got, I've got egg on my face, and then um, we'll record this and post it into the forum afterwards. That's probably a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, I the only option that. I can think of would be to postpone and choose a different forum. I'm happy to do I'll this again. To do this so again. I'm gonna because what I'm not gonna be able to do is do the whole. Um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna show you is how we would mark out with triangulation in CAD and give a little bit of a talk through with that. But if there's interest, what I need to do is actually show in a real life scenario. So mobile camera and that would have to come into another meeting. But I'm, I'm just going to make my apologies and I'm going to come straight back over. And I'm prepared to do all this now and I'll record it and I'll put, in, put it into the forum. Um, but it would be worth a while longer term finding something that works and I'm sure there'll be a way because there's probably a lot of us on here that want to yeah, share information or prepare to give something. So I just gonna make that post in the forum now. Okay. Just need to find the right post. There we go. Okay. Team viewer event. Um, I'll be a second. So I'm, I'm prepared to host this again. So, um, I think my wife's just coming into my office because she's going to tell me she can't log on. <coughs> there's a <coughs> there's a limitation with TeamView with the number of people. Um, so what I'm going to do. I'm going to record it. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead with it. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to post that, make my apologies. And then, um, so we, we've got the five attendees anyway. <clears throat> so 
I'm not sure if everybody's out there PC or maybe they're logged in and sort of going to go into attend it. The six. Can I ask if everybody just types their name in the chat box and I know you're in attendance? If if not, I'll wait until so Alan's here. Jeff, <laughs> Bjorn, I think you're here. Yeah, yeah. Isaac, brilliant. And Melissa. Melissa was um, chatting earlier, so she mu she must be in the group. Okay, um, let's go. Right, just close that down. So in a file box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop uh, the measurements that we're going to be using. So <clears throat> historically, I never learned to pattern, and um, the company where I learned my trade, I I've been self-employed since 18, but we... we um, Me measuring was the way it was always done. So any canopy that was on a framework, bimini, cockpit enclosure, spray hood, and a lot of other canopy other... work as well, would be measured. So using triangulation. So if you open... If you I, open I... Does that file come through to everybody? Actually, I'm still seeing that license restriction. I don't know if, if that's just because I was... I'm not actually seeing the um, the CAD program, if that's what you had up. Okay, let me put the CAD program up, and I've just closed the, um, the license issues. Two, two seconds. Let's drag that over here. Yeah, now it's so, on my screen. So, so th th this is Rhino. So we, we can see this, yes? Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do so this is a this is a drawing that we would have taken on site, and I've, I've sorry, I've dropped that into the, uh, hang on, I've dropped this into the file box so it can be downloaded. So we would, in most instances with a spray hood, we would take great care to make the framework symmetrical, and we would take great would take care great to mount the framework symmetrically on the boat, and we would take a few check measurements. So generally, if anything's off center, it will be cutouts because winches work the same way around. <clears throat> and equally, if anything else is off center, it's normally the hatch. So the hatch in the garage may be moved off center. But the majority of modern production boats will be symmetrical. So great care to take the frame to get the framework symmetrically. And and a way to do that is if you if you draw around the frame and very cleverly, uh, very accurately mark the endpoints, and you turn the frame over, you flip it, if it's symmetrical, it's going to lay within the same, the same curve. So we could measure the whole project, but generally speaking, half would be measured. And so what you're seeing along here is the actual um, uh, the center lines between the, um, the two frames and down to the deck. And I'm going to bring another image onto the screen. So from those measurements, this spray hood was produced. So can everyone see the picture? I can, yes. Yep. Okay, so um, that was produced from measurements. We pro we, we, we've always done a lot of production work. Um, this is how we would produce the work. So I've never templated a spray hood in my life. Um, and for the first, I don't know how old, 18, I guess for the first 20 years of my career, um, measuring using this method was our, our method of um, uh, production. So what I'm going to do, this is that product marked out. But I'm going to show you how we would do this. So I'm going to turn these layers off. So I'm using a package called Rhino. And what we would have done initially is the traditional way of doing this, it would be marked out on the floor. So the floor would be varnished or a high quality um, sort of lacquer on the floor. And the floor is used as a big drawing board. <clears throat> so compasses or tape measures would be used with an awl to swing arcs and the intersection points for the arcs. And I'm going to show you how this, 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 this pans out in a second, but that, that will give you the shape. And the way it was always explained to me is with free measurements, if you think of navigation, you can get to any point. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a start 
And um, so I'm just going to bring the drawing up again, just so you can see this. So I need to flip the drawing. OK, so I'm, I have this is going to disappear in a minute, but I'm going to start marking out. And <clears throat> this is a center line between the spray hood bars, the rear bar. This is just indicating we're putting a grab rail welder grab handle on the back. So the the rear bar of the spray hood, the front bar of the spray hood, and this is the marks around the deck. And if I bring that photo back up. So what, what you would do is measure around the framework. To, the, the frame would be pre-stressed, set up with straps. If it's a recover, you could put the marks onto the canvas. Very accurately find the center. Very accurately find the center on the on 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 the on the deck, and then we would put a series of measurements around these um, around these frames. And to be honest with you, I I actually learned um, Imperial. Uh, we used to be Imperial in this country. I learned we switched over to metric when I was at school. Um, but when I started in the workplace, all the old timers worked in Imperial. And it was only when I went over to um, using CAD that um, we switched to metric because I found it easier. But so from the center marks, where the curve is quite gradual, we'd probably put marks around here every nine inches, let's say every 225 mil, something like that. But then as the curve becomes tighter, you need to put your marks closer together. So perhaps when we get to this point, our marks might be every four inches, every 100 millimeters apart. And same around the deck, we, we, we'd plot the marks, pencil where we want the sprayer to go, and there will be division marks. So I'm going to start marking this hood out. So there is probably a benefit in doing this again, because having that drawing pre-printed in front of you will probably help, help you go along with what I'm doing. But here, here, here goes. So we're going to produce what I've done here. So I'm going to draw a line, and that's eight eight three six, because that's the center line measurement. And then I draw a circle, two hundred, two hundred, eight sixty. Now I I haven't done this until at, well until recently, just having a practice this afternoon for, for probably 12, 13 years. Um, so a little bit rusty, but it used to be really quick at this. And I think if you've watched that video yesterday, you would have noticed that I think the video, the length of the video was about 24 minutes. And that included sort of drawing windows on. It wasn't finished, but that included drawing windows on the, um, on, on the spray hood and uh, seam allowances on the front. So what I'm doing, there's, it's obviously not that intersect point. I'm just picking up the intersect point. And with Rhino, you can click, you can um, select the points that will actually um, be snapped onto. So I'm, I'm clicking just intersect. So if this isn't making sense at the moment, just bear with us. But you'll start to see the shape of a spray hood pan out. So what I'm doing with these measurements is replicating what we've measured on the boat. But the clever bit of this is that what it's actually doing is, is presenting me those 3D profiles that were measured as a flattened 2D pattern. So this measurement here, I'm going to start to draw in some points. So down to that intersection. This is where it's dropping down the side of the garage. The garage is the part that the um, in the UK we call the garage the part the hatch slides underneath. I'm not sure if that's the same for you guys out there. So again, I, I can either use points and just put points on the intersect Oops. and draw my lines afterwards. 
or I'll show you in a second. I can draw as I go along. So again, this was another mark around the bar at 200 millimeters. On the on the boat, a measurement was taken from this point on the deck to that point on the bar, and I have a measurement at 830. So if I do that. If I don't want to put the points, the other way I could do this is just draw the line in stages as I go around. So practice makes perfect. And like anything in life, um, if you do it often, you, you can become very quick at this. And it was, it was possible for me to get the whole spray had marked out and complete and with all the tool paths on, ready to cut, all the windows, all, all information, and I could do that. Um, sorry, I'll mark that easily within an hour. So this is the front of the spray hood that I'm forming. So what I'll do afterwards, I'll give you a chance to obviously um, ask any questions. I'm guessing not everybody here has used CAD. Um, so self-taught with CAD. And what we're doing now is just on a, on a completely different level to um, the presentation that I gave to the MFA. As an example, I'm not sure if anyone saw some of the videos that I posted, but we, we can design a, a, a bimini and have the pattern for the frames and the cut file for cutting all the canvas, all nested, and I can do that in 10 minutes once we've got the data for the boat. Sorry. Okay, so this bit might be confusing. If you just bear with us. So it should start to look like a spray hood shape. And you you tend to get to know um, what the shape should look like. So th this is what we call the wing, the R section. Right, I'm just going to ask Jeff, are you still there, just to make sure that I'm not talking to myself? I am here. I was muted. <laughs> no, 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 it's good. <laughs> if I'm teaching our staff, I always tell them I I'm, um, I'm hopeless at talking and uh, um, I sort of need to concentrate sometimes, but I guess we're all the same. So we, we had staff that joined us from another company uh, a, a few years back, and they learned traditional patterning skills. And they actually preferred um, this method of construction. Um, <clears throat> so you need to keep the paper dry if you're measuring. <laughs> um, but apart from that, wind doesn't come into play. So if, if it's windy, we're not trying to stick um, pattern, patterns around. Other advantages that we found, if you're working away, um, you can photograph, you can, 
if you can scan, um, you can email the uh, um, the measurements back. So if we had a rush job, um, so we always put this bit of detail on the back of the wing. Just try and show what that is. It's almost a signature to us. I mean, from a distance, I can always tell if it's one of our spray hoods. I'll, I'll bring the picture up. Um, let's just go through. So you're look, you're looking at work here that we 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 produced a very long time ago. Um, I've got an image that shows the. Um, let's go a second. So I'm looking at another monitor. I'm going to try and find a. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got a picture of that part. But this is this is a buckle and strap that comes down for the spray hood. Okay, and then this is just a little bit of detail that we'll have on a on a on a on a spray hood. Um, if I draw out a little bit more of this, you'll you'll get to see. Um, so what we have here is where. If you're taking a pattern, the two panels that are required are going to start to um, move, move away. I what we what we call a dart. So last time I drew points at the intersection, I, I can draw the line and um, continual as I as I go around. So you may think that, um, OK, this all looks great, but um, the chances of making a mistake with a measurement are quite major. But there, there, are, there are some easy checks that you can perform, and I'll run through them afterwards. So this is going to form the shape around the back bar. This is the front bar, and I'm generating the roof panel now. So I've already marked that one. So if I for, I've forgotten where I got to. <laughs> so I'm just going to take that measurement, 1032, and I've got that on the drawing. So I can get back on track. So my biggest worry with hosting this presentation was um, <laughs> just the lack of practice in doing this. And it's a shame for me that this will probably be a, a, a lost art. So you can see we, we are nearly there. So same routine for a cockpit enclosure, same routine for free bar spread. Same routine for Bimini. Oops, again, I've forgotten the measurement. So what I would normally do is be ticking these off on a drawing as I've marked them. So you'll always get this sort of regular shape with a spray hood. And we have one more to go. So if there were cutouts for handrails and bits and pieces, that's all done with triangulation as well. So I have made a mistake there. All right. 
grab so Oh, he's there, that's it. So I'm just getting confused. That that there, that's half the roof. That's the front section. And that's the wing of the spray hood. Um, on the drawing, I will have other detail for where we want to put flaps or track. If there's little cutouts, um, all that detail is on the drawing. This is the hinge point on the, that's the back bar. This is the hinge point so that the seam runs along the bar so when that's um uh, machined um so all, all, all form with triangles and what we would do after this is i would mirror so I just put those points in Okay, and then, so we used to use a different CAD program called AlphaCam, which was very expensive and nowhere near as easy to use as Rhino. So about 7,000 pound a license. Um, and they would call doing what I've done here, a spline. So what I've done, this is a curve that goes through points. What, what I had originally is a straight lines between each point. Okay, so. So I'll do that again. So there's a Rhino command called curve through points. For those that haven't used Rhino before, when you're using a command, oops, that's because I selected that point over there accidentally, not what not looking what I'm doing. Um, just going to show you something in a minute. Okay. So right click to accept. So what I've got now is a curve. Okay, and so I'm going to mirror points along here. That's my center line. That's my um, axis for the mirror. So when you, I'm, I'm using this tool here, curve through points. So you will have options up here and most of the tools you can configure how they work. So if you're using a tool and it's not giving you the, um, the result you would expect, have a look at up here. This is called command line options. Um, you may not understand what it's offering you, but that's where you need to be looking. And I can go to select last created object and use colors. Colors will help you. Um, understand what you're um, what you've drawn so advantages of this um, and how I would know if something's gone wrong across here if that had come out like that or gone in like that it's very obviously wrong and to be honest normally if that was to happen it would be one one three two one one oh two it's normally logical in terms of where and um, that error is. But the other point here is I have match marks which are exactly the same measurement around each frame. So with a pattern, um, you can stretch a pattern, you could stretch one part more around a, a, a bar than the other corresponding part, and you could get two different lengths which are machined together. With this, A will equal the length of B. So if I take the length of, unless I've made a mistake, um, if I join that up, uh, I'm going to get rid of the yellow, which was the, um, that was just to show you how you draw a curve afterwards. But oh. 
So if I measure, analyze length, I have 1,200. 1,200 because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six measurements of 200 around the bar, which equal 1,200. So if I, I'm just going to join that to that. And if I've got this right, I'll have 1,200 around the other bar. 1,200. If I haven't, I know I've made a mistake, and I just need to go back and check check one of these. Um, so I'm going to delete that. OK, so this is one I did earlier, <laughs> um, just to show a little bit more detail. So the the Bjorn, you, you obviously, um, you, you, you've got great skills and uh, you've got the boats in your workplace. And um, we have to um, allow for stretch, what we know happens. So canvas stretches slightly, frames distort under load. The bottom edge of the wing will always come down lower um, than where you anticipate, where you measure. So we, we, we bring the bottom edge of a wing up and we always cut this corner out just to release tension on, on, on here. But I can take the points off. So select points and if I put them on. OK. Right. So I guess I, I'm going to stop at this stage and ask if there's any questions. Well, if you don't have a, a CAD system for cutting, is there any way to make use of this um, on, a, on a layout table? Um, yes, that's how, that's how I learned. We used to do this on a layout table. So when I, when I actually learned, I mean, I, my father was in the trade. So what, what, what happened was I, I grew up in the industry, Saturday job, school holidays. I always wanted money in my pocket and never wanted to work for anyone else. And I actually registered the company at 18. My father got made redundant a couple of years later and he was going for a job interview. And I said, don't go for the interview, come in and talk to me. And we, we actually worked together for a number of years. Um, but <clears throat> so I, th this used to be marked out traditionally on a, on a floor or on a table using tape measures and chalk. And then when wet erase pens came out, we started using wet erase pens. Great because very fine tip, much more accuracy. And the CAD side, just I'd rather sit in a chair at a desk and mark out um, on a computer screen than be on my hands and knees. Um, you know, if we're going back now, in, in the UK, there are I think it's two two of the main wholesalers, fab, fabric retailers and hardware retailers actually have cutting equipment. They have the computerized cutting tables. And maybe this is an idea for out there in the US and other places. So you can, you can send them the CAD file, the cut file. And if you need 19 foot three inches of canvas, that's what you'll be charged for. They put a markup on the on the price of the fabric but let's say you've flattened your spray hood or what you call a dodger you've produced it you send them the cut and file and what comes back to you is all those cut panels and so perhaps there's a lot of people that want to get into cad and you have so many more cover makers in the us i don't know it's a much bigger country but it's i don't know the density of cover makers in any any given area I am surprised that nobody is bought into this and offering this service. So it would be great for the smaller cover makers. Produce your cut and file. You, you could start off with something quite basic. Let, let's take a, a, a sail cover, a stat pack. Do you imagine you need that in Captain Navy, Sambrella Plus Captain Navy? You draw out, you draw out the file, send it off to them. Back comes the cut panels. And Very the other cool. advantage is we have thousands of um, uh, projects that we, they're CAD files. They're, they're all catalogued. They're very, very easy for me to go and find a project. 
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring something over onto here. And we, we've got CAD files now going back to 2008, I think, when we started using, using CAD. And it, the database is massive. It, it really is. And but there are certain projects, we, we've repeated them three or four times. Maybe because the boat's been sold, not, not because of longevity of product, but the boat's been sold, somebody wants to change the colour. Um, boat's been sold again, somebody wants to do something a little bit different, maybe configure it slightly different, and we use the same CAD files. So we, we will document everything document properly everything. With, with reference numbers. And you, you'll be aware, if you know what we do, we, we, we use 3D CAD. So you, you, this is where you, you, you can get to. Um, it takes time. But it, is, it is learnable. It is doable if you put the time, the time in. But the, the issue for me was you, you're all going to be running a business. And you, I don't think anyone can learn this unless they're prepared to put the time in in the evenings. A outside of work and outside of the pressure of the phone going, somebody needing your attention. But if I, if I try and mark out a cell cover, let me just turn this off. So if I'm recommending how to get into CAD for somebody that's going to um, start from nothing, forget the 3D, start with 2D work first. So I, I'm going to start with a cell cover. I'm, I'm going to make up some measurements here because obviously I, I haven't got a drawing in front of me. This is how quick it can be. Oops. So we'd have the measurement around the mast. So bear with me if these measurements don't look correct because um, I haven't got any measurements in front of me and I'm, I'm just guessing. Okay, obviously that's wrong. <laughs> Um, like I say, I'm, I'm just guessing measurements here. So we're enjoying the whole lot. Let's put that in the wrong place. But, but your offsets, they are so easy to do. So we, we call these tablings reinforcings. This is the sort of stuff I love with CAD. So I, I, I can just mirror that. So my tabling, when that's turned, that's reinforced around there. Um, we'll probably start our attachment points. So obviously, I'm going to be quicker doing this. But so I'll normally be asked staff to do this. So I'm going to mark the hooks along the tabling. This will give me the measurements that they are apart. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, on the opposite half, we would have eyelets. So on the opposite half of the cell cover. Okay.
Okay, so on here I can get rid of the eyelets. Okay, so that's where the sew-on hooks would go. And this is where the um, the eyelets go. So sew-on so, so hooks. This this side is yeah. Okay, I could. I arrayed that along the wrong line. Don't worry. <laughs> it's just where I've done that quickly. But I, I can nest that into the canvas if I want to. So. Some brothers one five two zero. Um, sorry, naught. Okay, so I can see that I can use color. Okay. Obviously, that's wider than the material there. Um, so I can build my seam in. I'll put a 20 mil seam allowance. So out there. Okay, and then once I have this as a CAD file, it's repeatable. Now, obviously, I would have, with that little bit there, we would have changed that. It would have just edited that slightly. But... Okay, so there's one half of the cell cover nested. And that's the piece that would join on it with a seam. And as you can see, it lines up exactly. Any questions? What about anybody else, Alan? Is this for a spray hood or uh, something around a framework? Yeah. Okay. So what we used to do, if we wanted to tighten up, let's say you, let's say your metric, um, what we might what we might do, for instance, is um, we might put the the marks around the bar at let's say one five two millimeters, but what we would mark out at or write on the drawing is one fifty. So we're taking a slight element out each time. With what we're doing now, did anyone see the video that we posted in terms of um, drawing a bimini? So no, no, nobody's seen what, what we uh, parametric design. I haven't. So would you believe me if I told you that I can draw a bimini um, and have it ready to go to a CNC machine in 10 minutes. 10 minutes is probably a bit too long, actually. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. So, two seconds. I need to find the link. But we've got, but we've um, got um, something that's a work in progress. But um, I'm going to show you. Just bear with me a moment. So for this, um, this is the future for us. So we, we're not a big company, but we spend a lot of money on um, R&D. And just bear with me a moment.
Okay, it's two sec screen sharing. And I'll get rid of that full screen. Just give me a moment. I'll show you something which um, I think you'll find quite exciting. Okay, move that out of the way. Okay, um, basic bimini on a motorboat is free measurements. Um, somebody give me a width between the feet, between the mounting feet. Watch the screen. Just give it a couple of seconds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Height above the mounting floor. Let's take that down to 250. Okay, this is a work in progress, but our in house version of this is complete. Um, let's take the, uh, the center line span. Let's increase that. Okay, and I've taken that to a four bar framework. Okay, let's put a camber on the top. You're going to see a camber go on that. Okay. I can change the tube size. The tube size changes the geometry because the, um, the hinges and all that are different. I can change the edge detail if I want to. Um, I've got options here with the windows. Okay. I can add a window in the front. They're all options that we... Um, the one that we have in... Ha this, this is going to go online, and clients will be able to design their own Bimini. Let me close this. Um, if I... The one that we have in-house is... Um, Practically every option that you might want to change on a Bimini is, 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 is there. So practically anything that you may want to change. Um, these videos are online. Let me just try and find. Okay, so what you didn't see there is in the background, every time we change a measurement, the, um, the, the, the cut and file is automatically changed. It's, it's prepared automatically. So by that, those panels are all flattened. The steams are added on. The reinforcings, pockets are generated. It's nested. Nesting is a process um, whereby it's packed down into the minimum amount of material. So all, all that happens automatically so so these videos i'm going to bring over these are online can you see this so see drag the point up increase the height of the bimini What I'm using here is a CAD uh, model that was given to us by a boat manufacturer. Changing the radius, the curvature on the roof. So this, re, put a raise in the top. This is like a piece of software you've got to learn. It, it, we're given complete control over um, every element of the Bimini. So by that, like any piece of software, you, you need to learn. It means there's lots of parameters to change. But what would have been happening with that is it would have been generating the um, all the CAD files to produce that automatically. And the one for sailboats, sailboats are a lot more involved. Um, so as you mentioned about backstays coming through, yes, that's all done on here.
So here you're seeing a little bit more of the design interface. So lots more parameters, complete control over everything. So that Bimini has been generated by telling it where we want to mount the framework on what service and put in two points at the required height and um, put in one at the back edge of the Bimini and one at the front edge. So we just change that to a four bar Bimini. Back to a three bar. Okay, now I, I've had no formal training in CAD or it, it's all self-learned, self-taught. These are all the some we, we use. Sorry, go on. Yes, yes, we do. So what you're seeing here in terms of the boat model was generated with a, a, a pro liner. So lots of people using CAD now and lots of people um, using a pro liner. We don't use a pro liner anymore, but it was a great tool. And this, this, this is what generated what, what's on here. So I, I believe there's still nobody worldwide doing what we what we do. And what that is, we don't take a a framework. We don't generate a framework, take it down to the boat, and then proline around the framework. The first time the framework goes to a boat with a spray hood cockpit enclosure or bimini is when we install the product. We design it all in CAD. So un unless it's a recover and we have to use frameworks which are already on the boat, what we do is um, so we'll get the CAD data for, for a bare boat. We do a lot of work with brand new boat manufacturers. And we will design the model, the whole product, in CAD. And then from that, we will um, use that model to generate the cut and files to produce that product. And so the, cam the canvas and the framework will both be generated simultaneously down on the factory floor. So we're not measuring around the framework. We're not setting the framework up. That means if I bought you in as a client and you were looking at the spray hood and you said, can we have a tighter radius on the corners? Um, I don't like the curve look on that. Can I increase the height? We can do it because we haven't we haven't produced anything. Yep. Yeah, it's it's very rare. So we, we supply a lot of dealers of some of the main brands, but they won't give us the CAD files. It's very rare we'll get CAD files from a from a from a dealer. So that the Bimini that you saw on a motorboat, that was a CAD file that was supplied to us, but it's very rare. So we used to use a pro liner and we used to take all the points to draw these services up manually that you're seeing here. And that would be the starting point. What we're doing now is we're using laser scanning. So the, the the yes yeah yep um, first in rows before even a pro liner and um, we had it all working in house and the minute we, we worked with a French software company and the minute we took it out onto a boat I found we couldn't use it in most situations the one thing we hadn't thought of was that you can't get the camera far enough away from the product half the time so on, on a motorboat. You know you have the very narrow side decks, so you can only you can't hold the camera out far enough, and you can't get the camera you can't get the camera high enough. If you, if you, if you're on a big boat and the sprayer is sort of meeting you at you know le, uh, nose level, chin level, um, you can only hold that camera so high. And but photogrammetry is moving on, and we work quite a bit with Alan Wolford, who's a member on the forum, the photo modeler. And we've done some research, and you can produce work from from the um, with Photo Modeler. And Dragon, who's a member of the forum, has been getting some quite great results of it. So, um, why has it changed? So, when we were looking at it initially, the minute you started to use wide-angle lenses, which you had to do because you can't get far enough away from the product, the accuracy started to fall down. But you you have to be um, you have to be careful. So. 
if you look at what Dragon's photographed, um, those projects are boats on trailers, which are quite small, and you can get around the boats and get the angles that you want. If you imagine being on a big fly boat, um, flybridge cruiser, and you want to get the sides of the, um, uh, the, the coach roof, you may not be able to get that camera far enough away. And yes, you can start looking at drones and things like that, but um, it, that's going to be complicated. There are insurance issues over here. Um, you're not allowed to fly a drone over here unless you've got a commercial um, uh, uh, drone license. It, it's, and I wouldn't want to be flying a drone around with all the halyards and you know stays that are on boats and um, the risk of losing it on water. Uh, if you look in there, we've just gone after the back stays. So see, see, we put an after extension on that bimini. The yellow, the yellow dotted line is a guideline to to pull in the radius of that bar. So because that bar is cantilevered, you need to use a completely different radius to get the same um, curvature. Probably not making sense. If the bar as it's set there at the moment is exactly the same radius as the other bars, but because it's set at a cantilever angle. The corners sit high, as you can see, with a yellow line. So that yellow line is a guideline, and we will use the um, adjustments that we have here to, to bring that in close to that yellow line. So this is showing that doesn't work. Yet radius of a winch handle with 100 millimeter clearance. So we allow 100, we, uh, a minimum is 100 millimeters clearance. But again, um, old school, with a bimini, we would take the framework, we, we would measure the bimini, but we'd have to take the framework to the boat. And you've bent the framework. And it's not that easy sometimes on a complicated boat where the winches aren't in ideal places to, to, to make sure you know you can clear all of this. You can cut bits off a framework, but what you can't do is um, start adjusting the radiuses, leaning the framework in more, um, adding a dog leg into the framework. You can't sort of do those things. So what um, on this video, just trying to show you, we don't have to do all, just trying to show you the flexibility. Um, so what, what they're doing here, adjusting the radius of that half bar so it, it near enough matches that that yellow line but the radius of the main bimini frameworks is around about six meters yet that rear bar is three meters half the radius but because it's at a cantilever angle it needs to do that to match it and as you just saw there you can just turn it on and off so with this, with the windows, we can adjust all the measurements, move them foot forward or backwards. Um, we put a window in the front panel, a window in the back panel. Now I'm going to move this on a little bit. These, these, I have posted these in the forum, and they're on our YouTube channel. But um, what I wanted to show you, I think we've shown it on here, is that, um, OK. So you'll start to see the clever part. Now, I, what I did mention to you, checklist, check you've selected the right frame size. Um, check the mount. Just check, check backstays. Um, so we're going to save this now. But when this button is clicked, it will automatically produce all the um, files to produce this ready to load to the machine with all the tool palms on all the information. So what this part is is we can we can present the bit, the bimini in three or four different scenarios. So we can either do it live with a customer, or we can save three or four different versions of it, and then we can present them with a, uh, to the customer. So by turning that button on, that's happened in real time. No time's edited out of that. That's how long it took to produce the um, frame pattern. And then it will also um, nest it. So nesting is the process of packing all that down. So those panels, 
are now distorted and shaped to allow for stretch and distortion. You were asking about that earlier. So putting it into software, um, we, we, we can define that as percentages, ratios, and have some sort of consistency. So that just finalizes the data. Then nesting. So this is as long as it takes. No time's edited out of here. It will look at packing those panels down in multiple scenarios to use the least, least amount of material. And the blue and red lines, any, anything in blue, the CNC table cutter will, will mark with a pen. And anything that's in red will be, um, will be cut with a knife. And if I go back and change the, um, the height of the bimini or the width of the bimini, that will all change as well. So it's a long, it's a long road. But so who's using CAD then? It, it, oh, oh, that's in the meeting at the moment. Not yet. Not yet. Interested? Sure. If I if I was in the US, you know, um, I I would probably run uh, <laughs> classes. Um, it's you you start. I, I've helped quite a few people, and you you can ask on the forum. But my, my biggest piece of advice, Rhino, you can download for free, and you can use it for ninety days with full functionality. And to be honest, all you need is another email address. And after 90 days, three months, you can download it again. So you can play around with it. And work on a 2D basis first. So Andre, who's on the forum, I met him about a year ago over in Holland. where We had some talks and went through things. If you look at where he's got to now. So he, he's producing spray hoods and cockpit enclosures. He was um, it's only a small shop, no CAD, no um, no pro liner, no um, uh, no technology whatsoever. But if you if you look at what the guy has accomplished, now I can tell you as well, there are a lot of people I know on the forum, um, fair few, and in the UK that have bought a pro liner or similar, and haven't got to grips with it and have sold it on. What you've seen that we were producing in the past, um, that was all done with a ProLiner. You just need a dedication to learn it. But the, the main advantage is for us, like I say, everything we produce is done with a CAD file. We, and it is such easy money when um, products come in and um, it is just off a CNC file. So in the past, when we first started out, when we were a small business, um, it was all about capacity and labor. And sometimes you get an opportunity, um, but you couldn't pull in the skilled labor to produce that work. Um, but if you know that once you've produced, I, I know that if I produce a design for something, we will likely sell multiple units over the years. So we photograph. We've got over 12,000 photos on our website. And they're all, um, apart from the very old photos, most of them are high quality. So we show the product in detail. Like I say, last time we checked, we, we, we actually exported to 16 different countries in one calendar year. So that, that was product on a self-fit basis. So Bimini's are simple to fit. And besides the photographs that are on our website, we take a lot of detailed photographs showing how the product will be fitted. So measurements for, for you know, mounting feet, um, we, we take a lot of detail, which might seem overkill. You, you may think, well, I'll, I'll never sell that product again. But, you know, we, 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 we do. We sell multiple units of lots of products. So besides what we sell to the dealer at uh, um, a very competitive uh, cost price, trade price, we will also sell that product on a retail basis. 
over the years and and, and we'll get top dollar for that we'll get we'll get top money for that yeah the first time you decide that oh i'll never sell this again and get rid of it you'll need it <laughs> yeah 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 oh, honestly there's so well okay so when we when we started with cad um for me the ability to spin a model around let me open something up um the ability to spin a model around on a screen and see in detail what you're designing let me have a i'm, I'm going to try and open up a couple of bits that we've been working on today um so we were we were the, the intention at first was it's a longer process not quicker um and we were just going to use it for um uh for production work for items where we get multiple units but it's just such a fantastic tool for design and we just decided hang on we're going to do all our work this way so even the private the one-offs and what's happened with the company we're probably the dearest in the uk for what we do but clients love what we do they you know they like the opportunity to this client here is considering buying his husband. Uh, so the, the, the guy and his wife fell in love with the Oceanis 62. But what you can see here is a factory spray hood. He won't buy the boat because of the spray hood. It's a brand new yacht. So this is a situation the dealer's in. If you look at the eye level here, see how low that is. With a count, I, I, we can show in this shot. And we're, we're, we're pushing this right up here. So we... we, we so this may not look so pretty, and we we would normally put a, a bit of a, a a slope and a knock um, a knockdown shape on here. The client's quite tall, and his key thing is visibility through the hood, and he wants this eye line here as high as possible, regardless of appearance. Um, but you know we're able to show show all this in the CAD. Showing here how the framework will fold down. The front rolls up, three separate panels, and we're able to, you know, to uh, um, to amend the design because we haven't bent nothing, we haven't cut no fabric. Um, this is all conceptual. So I'll, I will use the term. We, we still produce what I call lovely work sometimes, but this client is quite clear. This boat's worth a lot of money. And he's not going to buy the boat unless he can see through the spray hood. And we can show the dealer that we 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 can do this. Um, so we got this going through this week. So this is scan. See the boat services here? That's from scan data. So we these are cool. These are term CAD renders. They're photographs you can take of the model. But we can put all our production data on the model. So put all our notes. OK. And that's that project that's been processed and flattened. So these are all the panels laid out. Um, let me just. But start, you, you know, you, you start small. That's our production notes on that section. Okay, so you can probably see the product here. Yeah. Um, I can put the texture on this if I want to, but. So we, the framework as well, we will generate the framework from here. If a client asks for this to be, so no framework has gone to the boat and we haven't digitized around a framework. This is all done off the CAD data. So, six, turn that layer off. So that's what we take off the boat. And we produce a design from that. And we're able to present it to the client by um, 
taking those images I showed you. And then we asked for the product to be signed off. So the client says, can I move a zip? Can I take the bottom edge of the window up higher? Can I increase the width for these pillars? Yeah, we can do all that. So we're looking to get a sign off process before we, 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 we do it. So again, that's what else we got here. I'm just uh, thumbing through some images there. But you, you, you can download Rhino. The, one of the first things I um, did on Rhino was um, I drew a rocket. My son was young, wanted some fun, and I, 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 I decided to draw a rocket. Okay, you can have some fun. We get a circle. Okay, so you can just have some fun. And you can start to put materials on. Okay, so yeah, first off. Okay, whoops, I took that the wrong way. So the 3D will take you longer to learn. Start start with 2D. Download the program. Use it for free. Okay, and we can start to put some fins on the rocket if we want to. We have a quad point. Okay, and we can put some colors on. So I could use the term, this isn't rocket science, but, but you, <laughs> 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 but you, 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 you get in, have fun with it. Just learn to, the biggest mistake people have is they try and do the whole lot right from the very beginning. They, like I said, I, I've never had no training, and and, and the the biggest leap for us um, at the very beginning was, um, as far as we were aware, nobody else had used CAD uh, for the three D design side. Nobody else had done it, um, and we were doing it the first time, and so it, it was a complete leap of faith. Um, and I, I've still, one of the very first jobs we did, I'll show you, first time. It's quite an unusual job, but. See that? That that was the first job that we did in uh, 3D CAD. It's outside our old factory. But that, that was, um, so the first time the canvas has gone on the boat is with a framework. The client on this didn't want sides. But that 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 is the first um product that we we, we we whole lot done in CAD. So the first time um the framework is mounted on the boat, the canvas is already machined. So no measuring around a framework, no templating around the framework. Um all done in CAD. That was the very first job. It was a massive leap of faith. You guys know it can be done now. So I, I you know, I, 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 I just have a love of learning. I, I've never got bored of it. I write software now for what we do. Um, what you saw with the Bimini, um, that that was something I wanted to learn. We we had a project costed with government funding, which was going to come in at about one point three million. Uh, to design a parametric design solution for products, which is what you're seeing happening with a Bimini. It's called parametric design. 
um, where you just change parameters and the whole thing changes. Um, in the end, decided to learn it and do it ourselves. We asked in local universities. I couldn't get any talent that uh, it wasn't being taught. It's fairly new, a new concept, parametric design, and generally just used in architecture. But you, you start small. Don't don't start. So before we were doing this, it was a 2D stuff. It was it was 2D at first. Do you know one of the first things that I want I use CAD for? The minute it came out on a Bimini. Um, I might, so I believe one or two of you, there, there are programs that um, are sold for uh, designing a Bimini. Let's say I want a four meter span on a Bimini. I draw a line that's four meters. Let's say I want a height above the mounting, uh, the mounting point of the Bimini. I want a height of two meters. Okay. And I want a framework that's going to fold. So we would start to draw the frameworks on a side profile. So we we would get the correct cut points. I'm not going to do this properly, but you know, start to work out the cut marks and all of that to get the get the span. But, you know, if if we want a frame to end up two meters high with a four meter span. And just using geometry, um, so it just made it easier. It's safe taking a, you know, cutting frameworks on a boat. Um, you'd agree the dimensions with a client beforehand, and then you could be very confident um, that, uh, when you, you know, when you're on the boat, the framework's going to match in with what you, what what you wanted. Um, just seeing on here, there's some comments. Bjorn, you say no CAD. Um, how do you handle? Bjorn, do you want to come into the conversation? Are you still here? Anybody else? I used to do. Um, I started out my career actually in. Uh, um, Doing 2D CAD for Fairchild Semiconductor, <laughs> but I haven't done it in quite a few years. But I've been interested in getting back into it. So, is that Alan or Bjorn? Sorry, I'm not. No, this is Jeff. Sorry. Oh, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bjorn's just typed. Can you hear me, Bjorn? No, we can't hear you. Um, is your mic on mute? If you look at my mouse, if you've got this, I'm not sure if this is displaying on your screen. I, I believe you're muted, Bjorn. Yeah, now you can hear me. Perfect. Hi to everyone. Perfect. Hi, good to hear your voice. Yeah. It's um, great that well, you I'm, 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 I'm doing, before. probably I'm, I'm, I'm doing it a completely different way than everyone else here. Um, because I, I, I don't pattern. I don't measure. Um, I really use my umbrella plus on the frame directly, um, and then I can uh, use a, a small choke and and mark uh, the line and and the frames. Um, that's how I do it, and I use um, carpet um, double sided uh, carpet tape. The the quality of your work speaks for itself. is is it's amazing. So. It's just um, for, for for me the triangulation is just uh it, it's it's going to be lost as a skill as a um it, it's harder to learn but um and obviously like I say you get great results of what you do but it was just I don't know I I just posted a few photos and it was just reminiscent to some degree because I I I don't know of anyone that uses triangulation as a method of measuring. Apart from perhaps winter covers or or boom tents, it was yeah. just wanted to show. It, it is a skill. It is 
something that's out there and you can see the um the fit and that that we would get very different to to yourself we are working remotely and yeah also- i i've i um, the the problem with triangulation for me um is um the the bending of the frames um because when you when you measure it um the you, you can tighten the frames with with, uh, with straps and so on but um when we do a bimini or over the top of, of an uh, um, enclosure, we do it. Um, well, we start with the first panel, then we um, sew the um, how do you call it? Um, so the pockets and in the pocket on it, the first. Then I, I take it back to the boat, um, put it on the frames, and then um, yeah, <laughs> it takes much power. Uh, to um, well, to stick it to the second frame with, with carpet tape. So I, I um, with my my <laughs> with my power, I can I can um, bend the frames, especially in the middle, towards yes. backwards. Um, and then I can then I have a perfect fit afterwards. And when you just measure it, well, you you will get some. Looseness? Do you say it in English? Um, we're we're um, not going to. Um, okay. So what comes into it is. Uh, uh, should we call it? There's a little bit of guesswork sometimes in in quantifying how much the fabric is going to stretch and distort. But yeah. where we're in a different market, where we do a lot of work for dealers. Two years ago, I think it was over two or three years ago, the the main industry boat show. We had free boats where we had to put spray hoods on the. We, we got free spray hoods onto boats in 24 hours of those boats turning up in the country. Yeah. Now, that was achieved by measuring and then being able to fax. It wouldn't, wouldn't have been fax, but being able to photograph and send the measurements back. So, the place is about an hour away from our factory, so they were able to be measured. The measurements were able to be sent back by being scanned, photographed, whatever we did, and then being able to start on the process. And as you saw there, I, I, we, we could mark a spray hood out in about an hour. Yeah. So actually, this is more than three years ago because I'm talking about this is a long time ago. But we, we did, um, if you search our social media, it, it, we made a big case study of it. Um, but no chance of having you know backwards and forwards backwards and forwards so what what yeah. we tend to ha- find happens at boat shows we're promised a boat will be here two weeks beforehand 10 days beforehand and with new models brand new models which are unveiled at a show um there's always a rush to get them out and they tend to turn up right at the last minute yeah so we, we we're but- often working remotely and um uh, your, the quality of your work and the fit speaks for itself. Uh, we we are always working remotely. Yeah. Well, we, we we are a very very small company, so it's it's only me, my brother, and one seamstress. Um, that's all we are. No more. Um, so um, and that's why all, all our customers have to bring the boats to our place. Otherwise, we we won't work because our system of working doesn't work remotely. Or um, if the boat is too far away, um, I need to have the boat here at our place. Yeah, we one of the things in terms of being able to grow the business and find a larger clientele, we we needed to visit various marinas. So we needed to expand an, an area that we cover, which means working out on site. So we're very often given very tight timescales on boats as well. So um, a dealer will sell a new model, and it will all be about the client will only take that boat if it's going to be in the water and commissioned um, for, for the Easter weekend. And after that, the boat might be going to the Mediterranean or somewhere else. And so it, it's always about very tight de- deadlines, and we have to work around the weather as well, which is a real problem um, yeah. in, this, in this country. So you know the, the dealers will expect well actually it was raining monday tuesday and wednesday 
it's drive Thursday. You can be on my boat Thursday, but you've got everybody else as well. And the, the weather is an issue as well. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's just a method that, that I, I learned and it's how we, um, we constructed our, our product for many years, but like everybody, um, I've always looked to improve. So, you know, I, I've, I've never had any respect for anybody that's doing what they were doing the same as 20 years ago. You, you, you always look to, to improve and what, 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 you know, where you can move on. And I, I need to thank you for those fittings, the Vadney clips. I was never aware of those. So thank you. <laughs> uh, I, um, well, we, we, we had the same problems. Well, normally we get smaller boats up to 25 foot, 26, 27, 28, all what can be trailered. Um, so um, <laughs> we don't have the large sailboats and so on. So that yeah. makes it easier for us. And therefore we have many um, sea rays and, and uh, crown lines. And um, we very rarely and they work all have sea ray. Because yeah. the, the, um, what they expect to pay is so minimal. So quite often it's a case where I can get the covers from the dealer for uh, you know a, a, a fraction of that cost. But as you, yeah. I think you've mentioned in the forum, we have to yeah. what we have to offer and sell is a better product, which is what yeah. we will always try and do and endeavour to to give a, a a better a better product than what will come in from the from the states. Um, we we have. There are certain um, uh, brands of American sport boat where the covers, you'll all know this, they are so cheap from the dealers. And yeah. um, uh, we, 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 we're not in the market of competing with that. Yeah. So we, we gain a premium on pricing for the fact that we can work with the client in terms of um, putting designs forward yeah. you know, before we, um, and we charge more for it. So it's not about it being cheaper. And I think that's yeah. one thing that a lot of people are lost. Um, if, if we turn up on a boat with a laser scanner, um, people think that we're going to come back, plug it into a computer, and it's all done automatically. So whilst the bimini's are, <laughs> the rest of it, no. And even with the data that you see that we're using um, from the scanner, you know, that takes time to process, a lot of time yeah. to make usable data. You don't just download it from the scanner and off you go. Yeah, and there's quite well, a bit I, of technical uh, knowledge as well to 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 be all learnable, but to be able yeah. to make that work. Yeah, I I, I wish we I, I could afford or, or have such a system or at least a, a fraction of it, but uh, right now I'm 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 working on a on a on a huge uh, rip, and only the side panel is more than uh, six meters long, um, so it 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 cost us many headaches. <laughs> Yeah, to, I can imagine. To, I can imagine um, to, to to make it and and to make it user friendly and uh, yeah, and the boat will go to Croatia right from our place, um, so it must be done perfectly. Um, uh, since we will have no chance of 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 improving it or repairing something, um, so it, it will leave us in in about uh, two weeks and and. And we will probably see it never again. But but um, the extreme dimensions um, is we've already used 50 meters of of umbrella plus for just the enclosure. Oh, and, you've posted um, some pictures, haven't you? Um, yeah, I've yeah. seen. Yes. It, it, well, I'm getting older, uh, and I, one, one of the things I, I didn't, we, <laughs> I I actually grew quite fond of working on a computer and i found with cad as well it was easy if i wanted to to work from home so if i if i i, I can mark i could if we were under pressure i could mark a spray hood out i could produce the cut files and i i, I could e email them into the office in the morning so it, it i didn't have to be in the factory if i got the measurements yeah. so i got the cad data i can produce something from home yeah. so it, a lot more a lot more flexible there are downsides yeah. to it because um, the caliber of staff you need with the um, skills or the, the academic aptitude to be able to learn um, what you're teaching them demands a higher, a higher pay rate. Yeah. 
so there so you know that that all ties itself into the fact that you know we we need to be charging a a, a much more expensive um price set than uh what's normal so i i believe we are probably the dearest in the uk but it's because we've actually made the process longer um but that, that project I was showing you earlier, the client is detailed and there's lots of backwards and forwards with the design. But we're getting paid for that because we it, it, we build it into the price now. So it's what we offer. So yeah. we're, we're not, we're, I'm, I'm not getting stressed because I'm expecting that project to take 16 hours and the client is backwards and forwards with the um, design alterations and this and that. We, we, we charge more and that, covers that some clients will take a lot more time than the others um yeah but we've got a good rapport from it because they like they like the way that you know we hold their hand through the process and look after them yeah well the tar i'm, I'm right doing the rip um, um well we are getting we are getting paid by the hour otherwise i wouldn't have done started oh i wish that worked for us <laughs> Yeah, we, we've done that <laughs> because it, it, it is so huge you can't calculate it, uh, yeah. and um, and we know that customer for many many years. Um, so and he said he just want, more. yeah, he just want to have a, a perfect uh, work, and uh, what it costs, it will cost, like we say in Germany, and um, so well, we, he will probably sit when we tell him the price. Um, but um, it will I, be nice. Yeah, I, we we um, I won't work on that basis. We really. we every time that a client says just go ahead and do it for us, it always ends up being a, a an issue. When it actually comes to paying, um, yeah. it, it's always an issue. So we will always um, yeah, try and price beforehand. But yeah, like it doesn't work always. We we need yeah. to do this more often because we. Uh, we need to find a, uh, something that um, works for more people. Um, but yeah, it, it would be good to get to know a few people and have a little bit, m bit more of a knowledge share. So uh, we've got Alan yeah. here as well. Uh, Alan, do you want to say something? Do you want to chat? Alan, are you here? Probably not. Probably not. Says he's here, but I'm gonna just ask. Uh, I'm. I'm. I. I was. I, I was thinking about of uh, taking some photos. Um, how I, well, not pattern the the panels, but um, well, um, take take needles, take the zippers, and and make the pattern fit to um, in order to sew uh, sew in um, the zippers. Um, because some some asked of it uh, in it would be great Facebook. to give a presentation. It it would be a um, and I believe we can store these videos on the Facebook site. So um, yeah. so because this, um, I I can see um, well I, I can sometimes I see very very nice uh, photographs of of uh, huge boats and and then I uh, then I st uh, see the, um, the windows are made out of macrolon. And um, if you use that, um, your 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 canvas doesn't doesn't need to fit very perfect um, because <laughs> you will have no wrinkles in it at all. Exactly. Yeah, it, will use... form, it just forms to the yeah. curvature. Yeah. Yeah. But but so if, one you, one if you one use one normal one vinyl, you must have a perfect fit. One and, of the problems um, we have is is the flexibility that's required. So one of the um, uh, reasons that we can't necessarily get away with using the um the thicker qualities of clear vinyl is in, yeah. in the uk it's very much expected that you just collapse the spray hood to the deck and yeah. they will expect yeah. the windows to just um self-heal to bring the canopy yeah. back up and with a cockpit enclosure is expected to yeah. be a 10 minute job and uh i'll use the term sort of screwing it up compressing it into a bag and so it's, yeah. it's not very forgiving and Talking to some people in the forum in the States and uh, in Australia, like Dave, um, it's very, very different over there. So that they expect to pay for high quality window materials that you can see through and then not yeah. fold the canvas down. 
yeah. and they, they will just anticipate not folding it down. But we can't run that past customers. Most just will not accept that. Yeah. Since we we don't have um, sailboats at our place, uh, we only have motorboats. Um, I can tell every customer, just take out the panel, roll it, store it. Um, and if you have the possibility during winter time, put it up on the boat. And don't uh, fold it, don't roll it, just let it on the boat. Um, so um, it will look beautiful even after five, eight or ten years. Depending on the customer, of course. Um, yeah. But um, I can... Often, what I can see on the photos on, on, on shown on Facebook, um, there are some faults, especially in the curves with the, with the zippers. And um, uh, most Americans, yeah, in my opinion, take the wrong zippers for making enclosures. They take the Delrin zippers, um, which I don't like at all. Um, we only use um, in what you call it, um, in German, oh. it's... Uh, uh, spirale. Um, That's we we do the same. We we, yeah. we we do the same because um they don't work very well around curves. Uh, the the yeah. Delrin yeah. um, Vislon zips. In yeah. this country, they're on. We use spiral for every everything, so we use YKK spiral. Um, yeah. and we we buy direct from YKK, so we don't go for any of the dealers. One of the reasons I did that was um, in this country uh, a few years ago, the dealers only sold black, white, or navy zips. And if we did a beige cover, we didn't want to be putting white zips on a beige cover if we did a gray cover. So we, we, we actually stock two, two, two different grays, a beige, a royal blue, besides the usual colors, um, a burgundy. Um, there's quite a few shades. And we, we have to buy in quantity to be able to do that. But it, it gives a much more color coordinated look to the canvas. So chaos spruce in, in the UK now, um, obviously what happens, it puts pressure on um, the wholesalers to stock these products. So when we when we used to go and ask the wholesalers that we want beige zips, oh, no, we're not doing it. Nobody else in the industry um, has a requirement. For 30, 40 years, it's been black, white, and navy. What's the problem? So we, we go direct. Then what happens is the competition yeah. starts putting pressure. So they, they now stock, I think, a, ba a beige zip and a gray zip. Um, but that was years after we, we were doing it. Same with shot cords, for example. We wanted colored shot cords. So mm. we started buying direct in, in quantity. But then after a few years, yeah. pressure gets put on the... The wholesalers to start stocking those colored those colored products all the cater tapes we wanted them in colors we didn't just want to be yeah. putting a, a a white catered uh, strip on every uh, on every product so yeah. we started paying to have it um and what i what i used to do is enter into a sort of proactive agreement with most people that um we would take their minimum quantity over a year or maybe two years and if we hadn't called it all off at the end of the two years, then they would have the right to send it in to us and invoices for the balance. So yeah. if somebody was to come in and say, uh, even with the webbins, a lot of the color webbins Chaos Bruce do now, they never used to. But we went direct to Boma Bond, who supply them. But what we had to do is buy thousands of meters per color per size. But we, we yeah. did it. But rather than having it all coming in one hit, we entered agreements with them where maybe we we would take 100 meters a month over a two-year period, and if we haven't taken a whole balance at the end of two years, um, you know it, it, it comes into us, and we'll, we'll be invoiced for it. Um, since you you mentioned Keda track or Keda, um, about three or four years ago, I had a Doral 25, um, and they have Keda. Well, um, we used to have um, we used to use uh, Keda on that enclosure, but uh, Doral, um, well, they had a special Keda. It was flattened. It was it was not round. It was not yes. filling the whole Keda, but it was flattened at the bottom. Um, since um, the company um, was not able to screw in the screws 
um, well, too deep. So they showed up and you couldn't uh, put in a normal keda. Um, so we had to reuse the old keda for, for our enclosure. And um, I could not find one um, wholesaler who has a flattened keda. And it, it, <laughs> and and I'm, I I will get um, another Doral twenty five probably in a few months, and um, I'm I'm really frightened <laughs> of having the same problems again. That that shot that seaway that I asked you about, we did the original cover. So we did the replacement covers twelve years ago. So we got the CAD file to replace them. I, the client said, um, you won't remember me. And I said, yes, I do, because we couldn't get the rubber extrusion back then. And he, he managed to get it from the US and get it imported. We can't find it this time around. But that, that's an advantage of um, he's come back to us 12 years later, wants to replace the covers. We've got the CAD files. So no measuring, no, it, it's all there and it's photographed and it's, it's easy money. So to me, that's yeah. where we get the payback on the CAD. Yeah. So it's, e it's easy work. If our if um when we were smaller, if our mill, if um how could there's a there's a lot of work that comes into the business that I don't even know about. I don't need to know about because they're selling products that I've designed. Well, not just me, but we we we're not that big, but we've designed years ago. So we we get we get an inquiry for for this or that to go to Scandinavia, to go to um, France, Germany. Um, we supply quite a kit, bit of kit to Germany, actually. Um, uh, we supply um, uh, the Hansa dealer in the UK, but quite a few of the boats are commissioned um, from from Germany. So we send kit out there, and Croatia as well. We supply kit to the Australian Hansa dealer, and those Hansas are commissioned from from Croatia. But it's it's, it's repeat business. I don't even have to know about it. I've, you know, designed that hood, and it's just multiple units of a CAD file. So the work order goes down to the work floor. Um, somebody just needs to know how to operate the cutting machine. Obviously, they need, they need to know how to machine the product. But um, yeah, no, nobody needs to go and find a template. Or it's all there. All the notes are on it. it it's easy. So it's a long-term investment. If you if you if you do invest, you'll start to get the payback years later. Somebody sold yeah. their boat, new client bought the boat, says, Can you I don't like the colour. Can you replace that cover for me in Burgundy? Easy. Just just easy. Somebody else has got exactly the same boat. So, sorry, go on. Sorry. Okay, so the tube and bender, you might want a pen handy. The, the bender that we use is a, a, is a touring CNC ring roller. The model is a Delta. It's a, so touring is a company. They're an Italian company, and they have a, they have a U, U.S. Um, uh, distribution. They supply into the U.S. Um, Delta is a version. Um, I've worked with one or two on the forum that have bought the manual version, which is a lot less money. Um, the CNC version, if we can draw it as a DXF, the machine will bend it. Yeah, what you what you do is um, you you need to do a lot of test bends. So they supply a special tool called an Archimetro. Archimetro? I think it's an Archimetro. And what it does, it very accurately measures radius. So what you do is you do a whole series of test bends manually at different coordinates. And what it will do is it will build up a graph. So it will plot a graph that, let, let's say, a Y coordinate on the top roller of um, 1,100 will produce a 6-meter radius. Bring it down another 25 coordinates, it will take that down to 5,600 radius. And you, you plot this graph, these points, and it will put a curve through those points, and it will work out all the intermediary um, coordinate, coordinates. And, and you, you 
you produce it's called a profile table and you produce that for every quality product that you're gonna so if you've got a different wall thickness you need a different profile table if you're, if you're bending a bigger tube yeah um so it's still needs manual adjustment because one thing that we um became aware of stainless has very very different bending characteristics depending on its temperature so if you were bending let's say you're mass producing steering wheels which our machine will do it will actually bend a coil if you want to what you would do is you'd keep your stock product in a temperature control room to get um uniformity of bend now obviously we we we, we can't do that so if the product's cold from overnight um it will be a little bit harder and so it will spring back a little bit more from that curve but it's basically there and you need to bring it in very warm temperatures it could it will soften we, we could produce a different profile table for cold temperatures warm temperatures but we, we we just manually adjust to that but it will bend um so 32 mil we can get down to about a seven inch radius 186 millimeters um 150 mil we can get down to about 100 sorry 25 mil we can get down to about 150 radius six inch radius and we we don't use those radiuses for covers um but what it will do different to a manual bender any radius we put in the shoulders it will bend 560 640 720 if we draw it so if we've got to make a framework follow a snood an exact shape if we can draw that shape in cow we can plot it the machine will bend it and so conventional bending you've got the two shoulder radiuses which will match and then you've got the top crown which is one radius now that won't always define a curve so if you've got a boat that's got a trough or a snood sometimes that radius is ever changing so six meters going out to five going out to four and then getting out to the shoulders which are tighter the machine will bend that it will form a program to bend it so if, if you draw a you, you can still see my screen can't you i'll get rid of the rocket <laughs> um compound there is a much more expensive version which will do compound curves you can turn the frame round and run it twice through we don't like using compound curves so when we were small and we did a lot of one-off jobs yes we used them but to take a template and be able to replicate something when you've got a compound curve and a frame it's quite difficult to take that template so they they, they look great and if you're doing one-off projects absolutely fine but they can be problematic if you've got a bar which is planar flat you could just lay it on a template and draw around a template or we can store we store the templates for the frames as a cad file so if i'm if you can if you're looking at my screen let's let's let's, let's draw a So we, we would um on a what's happening here? Two sex. <laughs> right. We we would mark all the positions for the clamps and all that as well. Um so let let's say we want to put a, a a camber on here. Maybe a bit more than that. We will always we always put a straight leg on the framework so that the M, M plug comes down into the deck mount at 90 degrees. It, it achieves the right angle. What I could do is oops, so turn on mid. So various ways we can um, Curve, arc. Okay, so I can get rid of those now. 
I can play around with the radius is on here. 300, 500, 600. We'll put a little bit of a radius in there. That, that's a straight leg and then moving out. Okay. Um, in, in, oh, the model of scat. Okay. So we're using a, uh, it's called, um, name of the company is Arctic. It's an Arctic Leo. Um, don't underestimate the learning curve. And, um, you really need to learn this stuff, the Rhino and the 3D CAD before you, um, what was happened, a lot of companies, have, um, we were told that when we bought the laser scanner here in the UK, not just in the UK, by the agent that came into us afterwards, and I wasn't very happy about this, but that's business. Um, they went direct to all our competitors because they know what we're doing. Texo are buying a laser scanner, they're doing a, and um, at the point where we committed, there was a six month waiting list, but um, they, they went to all our competition. And a lot of them have bought the scanner because um, techs are using it and they've seen we're using it and we're seeing what we're, what, what we're doing. But the agents told me a lot of them, um, they just haven't got the CAD capability or the CAD skills to be able to use it. So they actually, it's all learnable. I'm not big headed in a way I'm saying nobody else can do it. But I, I, it's what, what you're seeing there without laser scan data, it takes a lot of knowledge and a lot of time. So what we've done as a company, what I've done, is the the last two three years, we, I, I've run a twelve month internship um, with a local university, and I've practically allocated that person to work with me on R and D. So we're very seasonal, and we use that winter time, and we've devoted, uh, uh, and it it was a you know conscious decision, but a hell of a lot of time to to hone the process. And to learn the skills, so because scanning is widely used, but if you go to Arctic's um, website, for instance, they'll show there's a, a a statue of a man on a horse in a museum, and it's a great scan, but it's applicable to what we do because it's a very large object, and large objects are complicated to scan and process the data. The file is massive, so if you've got a cube. One by one by one, the volume is one. You 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 go to two centimeters or two foot, two by two by two. You obviously got the cube number. So if you multiply one by one by one is only one. If it's four, four by four by four. Obviously you got you got sixty four now. So when you start to come to the size of the boat that we need to scan, the data size is massive. And the process is so their case study with the um the man on the horse, I think they took about eight days, two weeks to process it. And that's that's great if we're in an industry where a museum and they do, or it's a pipeline installation or um, you know, something where there, there there's that money on the project. But what the understanding for us is actually we had to have confidence that we can actually process large format data in a reasonable time that's cost effective. Yes. Yes. Yeah, very. And I, I did a lot of benchmarking and um, we're working with Arctic because um, there's a lot on the program that doesn't uh, their software that um, doesn't work in the way that they say it works. So at its most simple, a lot of the algorithms that have to be run um, don't work on a on a um, multi-threaded basis. So they only use one logical core of the processor. So even though you buy a very, very powerful PC, and it beggared belief that this hadn't been picked up. But you know why? Because most people are scanning, um, probably the largest object would be a human. May... And there will be cases of a car. If you if you read their case studies, so that that man on a horse, they took 80 scans. So you, you took the arm, the the leg, the hat, the left side of the face, all worked on individually and put together. 
But that's the case of somebody going in and saying this is going to cost you, I don't know, X amount of thousand uh, pounds of dollars to, to, to do this work. And, and the cost is there. We, we, we can't take a spray or a Bimini or a cockpit enclosure, say, because we're scanning. Um, you, we need to allow for five, seven days just to process the data. So what, what we needed to be able to do is take that process down. So Arctic is still working on it. So some of the core processes are, 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 are now multi-threaded, um, but they, there's still a way to go. Um, again, with a, with a, with a, with a hardware on the, on, on the PC as well, um, you, 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 you need to be using sort of next generation. Um, the, the files are very, very large before they're processed. So the idea of saving that over a network, um, you know, a gigabyte network is just going to take forever just to save a file. It's just going to interrupt. The, 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 the longest part of the learning curve for us for processing the data, um, because we you want to compare and evaluate all the time, is that the process, and I'm not kidding you, could take a day and a half to run. So very, very long-winded to find out the best settings, the optimized settings. Because you know you you try one scenario, and it takes that long to run, and quite often it crashed. But we're we're, we're getting there now. We're getting there, but we're, we're using um, we're right we're writing around little bits of software to be able to process and speed some of the process up. But there was a stage where I was sort of questioning whether, although we could use the data, um, uh, whether we you know we 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 could get there. But that now, yes, definitely, De definitely, yeah. and um, we we've got it down to quite a refined process. So all all can be done, but just don't. It's not a bag of tricks where you're just going to plug the scanner into a computer. And so it, it's all doable. It's all learnable. But just start with the basics. That the people I know that are given up, they've gone. I, I couldn't even even contemplated this massive spend. We're going to automate. We're going to do all this. I'm going to buy a ProLiner, perhaps a scanner. I'm going to learn to use Rhino. I'm going to buy a CNC cutter. I'm going to start teaching my staff how to do all this, all it, all in one hit. And you know, you you you're going to lose the will to live. So, yeah. <laughs> there, I, I mentioned to you that um, two of the fabric companies over here, um, Chaos Bruce and Contender actually have their own CNC cutting equipment for the purpose of supplying cut files. And that's a great way to go if there's anyone in the US doing it. I also know by us, um, we ha we've never used them, but there's a, a large company that set up and they just offer CNC cutting from laser cutting to water jet cutting and including um, uh, you know, flatbed cutting. The company is all around that. So there may be other avenues without investing in the equipment straight off. So you can concentrate on learning the Rhino, reducing your cut files. I've been uh, actually having conversations about with uh, someone who I'm a plotter cutter about doing this very thing here in the States. So. If I, 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 if I had the money and I was over there, I think there's a real market opportunity to offer cutting facilities we, we, if I was a wholesaler of fabric so to be able to buy exactly what I need for that project you know if I want a couple of extra meters I'll I'll, I'll, I'll tack that on to so supply me all the cut files because when, when we when we generate the product all the pockets are there all the reinforcings are there we, we cut the whole lot it's all there and all nested down but yeah. it, it would be a great way to do to do business there shouldn't be a long lead-in time because if you email a cut file, it should be cut in 10 minutes. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of a backlog in getting the work through, but it shouldn't be. It's not something that's got to be welded and constructed and is going to be on the end of a three or four week waiting list. Hmm. So bit, bit by bit, and that's what Andre's done over in in, in, in Holland. Um, he's just he's bought his pro liner recently. Um, I think he borrowed one initially, had help from somebody else. There may even be another cover fabricator that you don't have a conflict of interest with that have the cutting capacity and can offer you that. That's that's specifically what I was working on. 
um, you know. So it's all doable. That, yeah. So when that I, seems when I like say it's it might be a good option. It, yeah, it's all doable, but don't don't bite off more than you can chew at, 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 at first. Um, you'll start to get payback straight away. Um, and more than anything, you need to enjoy it. So I, I, I really enjoy designing in CAD. I, I really do. Um, you know, and that, like I say, I, no background in it. Um, I love technical drawing at school. That was a subject I took. And I guess that led in somewhere to, you know, when, when, when I was aware of CAD programs. I just wanted an easy way of doing things. So Tom, even if we look at lettering, if we if we look at if we were to draw a set of do, what we call dodgers, um, dodgers are the um, uh, side screen that goes on a, I think I think you term them side screens. You know they're laced to the guard wires. So if, if we want to do some lettering on these. It's it's really easy. So I I can just play around with this with the sizes, the, the text. I can just drag this. I can change the font. Um, two six. If I want to change the font, the letters, move it around. So I, I can select different fonts. So that, that's oops, two sex. Ariel. Okay, so you get the idea. Let's try an italics. So this is easy to do. I'm just sitting at a machine. We can cut those letters out if we want to. We can we can um, give a representation of this to the customer. Well, years ago, we did. Um, uh, Disney had a, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. They actually had a yacht built name and we we had to do the, the the there was a copyright on the font pirates of the caribbean we had to put the letter, lettering on the cell cover we built the cell cover and that that all had to be hand generated printing paper templates off the font and but you know <laughs> stuff like that now is so easy it, it it's just so easy you know and there are lots of fonts which are script so if i if i want something which is script which looks like handwriting So do it, do it for fun. At first, let's take that bold, you know, give a bit more impact. Um, okay, we should have a capital T, you know. But yeah, like I say, download, download the program. It's for, it's free. You can use it for ninety days. That's three months. John, may I ask you one, one, one more question? Of course. Um, re regarding the frames. Um, well, if you if you get an, another batch of, of, of the rods, and, um, well, we experienced um, that one batch is different from another one. So they bend a little bit different. They might be a little bit softer, a little bit harder. Yeah, it's and, common. Um, and so what do you do when, when you CNC bend your frames? Because if you, if you get new, new, <laughs> new rods, um, they might be Let completely me... different. Okay. So, so um, what I try and right, what we do with stainless is we will look at what we've ordered the previous year yeah. and we will put an order out to tender 
shall we say. Yeah. Um, we don't often have to do it now, but if we've seen prices move in the wrong way, because certain commodities like stainless, um, the products quite often come in from the same mill. You, you can nail down the specification exactly. And we, we only use reputable suppliers. But what we do is we commit to what we reckon we'll use in a year. And we fix the price and they store the product or secure secure the batch of product, should we say. Mm -hmm. So we should get yeah. consistency for, for a long time. And it came about a few years ago, we saw the price of stainless near enough double in a year, came back down, but price of chromium and molybium went up. So we we fix the price. We fix, they're not going to different mills and getting the stock from different places because um, they don't have to. We've agreed a price. We've agreed a price. So the price comes down fantastically. The, the minute you go and talk to two or three stainless suppliers and say, um, look, I'm going to commit to a year's supply of stainless, um, we don't get invoice. We only get invoice for it as and when we take it. We we'll make that clear. And like I say, mm. at the end of the year, if we haven't used any, we have to take it. Um, but the other thing is, in, in my opinion, the older the stainless, the harder it gets. So if yeah. you if you try and rebend an old framework, the, the 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 shape tends to become intrinsic in the in, in the stainless. So, we, in my opinion, any old frame, any any frame that's had the shape bent into it, set into it, is very very difficult to to rebend um, or, or adjust. It would be much easier if that frame had just been bent. So older product, we 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 know is. Um, uh, the, 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 it becomes harder but temperature makes a massive difference so this we tested when we had the cnc machinery installed um there's a whole wealth of industry out there where you know it's completely different to us and it was just well this is just a given it's a it's a norm and people so we, we were expected to know this well of course um 10 degrees difference um i'm talking celsius so, but a difference in temperature with stainless that you might get from the morning when you're first coming in to, to midday makes a big difference on, on, on stainless. But the other thing is always bend the stainless with a weld inside the tube, either down or up. Um, yes. If you bend it with the um, to the side, as you try and bend that tube, it will try and put a twist in it. You've got it. But my yeah. the weld is actually stronger as well. So in my yeah. opinion, it's better you, if you bend with a weld on the top or the bottom, the, the bend is likely to go through and the bar is just like to come out and lay down flat, plain and without any twist. But it's harder. The weld is stronger. So if, you, if you're bending with the weld the other way around, the tube will actually be softer. So we, we like the weld on, on the bottom or the top because it's, it's, we're using it to our advantage. It's stronger. And what we actually do is have the welds at the bottom inside uh, because it naturally rolls. Yeah, it tends to roll that way. So in the, in the um, we've got the, the, the feeders for the CMC machine, the rollers. And generally speaking, if you put a tube on there and let it roll to its natural orientation, it will roll with a weld to the bottom because it's heavier. So that's that's so we have the um, um, the weld is on the top. Sorry, when it goes round, the weld is on the outside of the bend, because really, yeah, present presenting it to the machine, the weld is at the bottom, so the tube rolls okay. round, so the heaviest part is the bottom. But the way the Got way it. the way our machine bends the tube, that means that the um, there's a video on our website. Have you seen the um? There's probably a video on our YouTube channel. Well, we like the weld on the we're on the inside of the curve because the outer part will stretch better than the weld side. Yeah, yeah. And you'll end up press the inner more. So. Yeah, we we get a very clean bend with a machine with the formers because what happens the tube is moving all the way through, and um, what the machine very cleverly does as well is. Um, you don't get a crease when it changes from one radius to the other. What happens is it works into the program that there's always a gradual bend with the tube moving um, as, it, as it's transitioning radiuses. But 
again, uh, you can see my screen here. What I was going to show, this is what you get with a conventional bender, combination of three arcs. But what could happen, you can, you can get a curve, which um, I'm just going to try and draw one. So you, you, you could get a curve on a, on a boat that you need to follow. That's unnatural. It's not defined by. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this very quickly and roughly, but. Yeah. So what the CNC ring roller will give you is um, it, it will bend this. So two sex. I seem to have lost it. I'm just using a couple of tools to clean this curve up. Okay, so there's a tool in here which will measure the radius. And different to what I had before, this is a constantly changing radius. Does that make sense? So the CNC ring roller will bend it. What will happen is the top wheel that's deforming the tube will keep moving all the time. So if I measure the radius on this one, if you have a look, that circle stays the same. It's a constant radius all the way around. What the CNC ring roller will do, it, 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 if this is a shape that's taking against a coach roof or a snood that it needs to fold onto exactly, um, it will it will bend that. Yeah. So the, the ring roller basically is um, is three, three, three rolls that are all motorized. You've got two like this. Your tube goes through. Like this. So two six. And then you have another roll which sits sits here and this one deforms the tube yeah. and what what it does look, is look it moves, yeah. yeah constantly moving up and down so tighter radius the roller will come down and depress the tube more so in a position like that, it will only put a very, um, uh, a very large radius in the tube. As as a tube is going through the machine, this this roller will constantly move if it's a, a curvature like what you're seeing on the top there. So just gonna try and see him find a video. And spray hood. One more question, John. Yeah. Um, because um, I've, I've seen you, you've made some Bavarias and, and, and so on, and um, the boat differs. Return of sound, oh, well, sorry. Almost Return. every boat differs from, from the same boat in about two centimeters, five centimeters, um, even the sides of the boat often differ. And um, when you make a, um, a cut file, or maybe a Bavaria 32, and you get the next one, um, the, 
the boat will not be the same. Um, yeah, it's like, what will it's like, your it's people like do, your staff do on on the boat when if it doesn't fit? Because maybe the windshield is uh, mounted on on the boat uh, differently and so on. Okay, so with a what we tend to find GRP boats, the one molding, um, like the coach roof superstructure, will be um, will be fairly accurate. But as you quite rightly state, when a boat or the molds come out, when, when the when the structure comes out the mold, it's almost like a jelly. I'm not sure if anyone's seen this in a shot, but it until they um, uh, secure yeah. the bulkheads in, it's quite flexible. And the bulkheads going in are a manual process, so it can put twist and a slight distortion in the mouldings, but it's not much. But what we do find is anything that's attached can be out significantly. So a windscreen can be out yeah. significantly on a boat. Yeah. And if you've got an arch or a lot of motor boats um, where it's a separate moulded construction that gets... Um, added on to form, uh, you know, the the um, the cabin or the superstructure. It, that becomes yeah. a manual process then, and it won't be massively out, but it can be out enough to make a difference. So 10 or 15 mil at the bottom can mean 50, 60 mil on the top corners that it's out. Um, so yeah. we we know we have to be careful with that. Now a bimini is not going to make any difference to, and uh, so what we do with all the frame canvas. It's one of the reasons that we use the adjustable end plugs. Yeah. So you know where you can turn the, you can adjust the fittings. And it, it gives us, um, yeah. this video, you, you've probably seen, this is at our old factory. Um, so you probably saw the frame. This is on our website. Um, yeah. You say adjustable end plugs. Are those the ones with the screw fitting yep. in the end to control yeah. the did, length? Did, did you see those there? Two six. Let's just try and. <laughs> those there yeah okay yeah. yep so it gives adjustment and it comes with a standard fitting stay that's in there which you can wind in and out about 20 mil but they also sell these two longer stays each with about 20 mil of adjustment so um canvas stretches that we find with with, with spray hoods um it's great to be able to retention the hood afterwards the clients don't normally do that but if we walk past the boat, um, the ability just to extend that framework 10 mil after a few weeks makes a massive difference. But it, it does give some adjustment as well in terms of um, fit because of what you're quite rightly stating. So we will, yes, you'll get, you're, you're going to get the best fit on the actual model that you measured from, but with a production item and at the price that they want to pay, um, you're not going to measure every boat. And so once you've got that stock, but you know it it works and we're we're using these we we get a good fit yeah right now i'm 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 actually using not the same but but very similar end plugs um with my my um tsar but um not for for tensioning the canvas it will not be necessary but but um for being able to um well to let the frames uh, lay flat on the boat for for trailering. Um, yeah, I that's mean, that's why I, I'm using every, them. All the fittings we use are quick release. So we, I I I don't yeah, like screws in fittings. So every apart from a 32 millimeter framework on a very heavy big structure, but with those we either through we bolt them, and we use like nylon yeah. nuts on the back, or um, we'll use a yeah. special captive uh, captive. Um, uh, uh, pin. But with all these, we use quick release pins. So the deck feet, I don't know if you can see the pins in here. Yeah. yeah. We've always zipped everything. Everything is fully zipped. <laughs> so the whole idea of taking frameworks apart, sliding them through, all, all these are riveted. So we take out all the grab screws. Everything's riveted with stainless rivets. Um, grab screws don't hold on stainless. Stainless is too hard. You, you could drill a part captive um uh like countersink to hold the grub screw but we, we we just if if clamp slips grub screw comes loose you lose the fit of the hood so we we rivet yeah. the whole lot with stainless um 
we just make the stuff quick and easy to take off. So it's all with adjustable end pl plugs. It's all with quick release pins. So you can take it apart. And we, we find the pins more secure because the the screws hard. Um, if you have a look, the screws are actually normally short on the fittings. They don't come all the way through. There's no Loctite on them, and it's a very coarse thread on them. And especially on the Bimini, where there's a lot of rattling, the screws come loose. And quite often, clients are not aware, they pull the Bimini out, and the Bimini collapses. Hmm. Years we, ago... We haven't experienced that for, for maybe 40 years. Uh, but we use um, um, well a, a kind of loop for um, to hold the pin, the set screws, and, uh, yeah. and so we can well, we really, can really tighten um, the set screws. Um, yeah, and, what what uh, happens for our... us? We... Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, no. We, we supply go we on. supply Ancaster, who are the um the 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 biggest um Benetow dealer in the UK, and when we took over the contract. One of the issues they wanted us to have a look at were the Bimini's on the bigger boats. And what they had yeah. was there's a lot of movement on the Bimini frames. We're talking quite large. And the screws, yeah. the screws used to work loose. And the clients were never aware. And the Bimini's collapsed. Yeah. And it was quite yeah. a common problem. So, yeah. you know, I think just on a, on, on a Bimini on a yacht. Um, and at that time, nobody was cross-bracing. So one of the things we were asked to come up with was an answer to all the lateral movement. And that's why nearly all our Bimini's, if you have a look, um, they're cross braced. So yeah. where it's where it's possible, we will always cross brace a Bimini, and that takes out a lot of the lateral movement. But most most companies, including the factory, they always used to be on just a pair of struts, and they they will wobble around. So yeah, yeah, we we will always try and put twin struts in the back. Um, Never find a product when you want it, but <laughs> just, try, just trying to photo, a photo which clearly clearly shows. Yeah, yeah. We we, we use um, a lot of uh, ball fittings, uh, and they have uh, two set screws. Um, yeah. For tightening, and and uh, we we've never experienced such a problem. Thank yeah, God. on on all the. Yeah. Um, on a 32 millimeter framework as standard, we, we actually um, drill through the fittings and double rivet. So yeah. even though they just come with one grub screw, and um, we're talking to carrier screws and have been for a while, they're meant to be getting into production. Um, some new frame fittings that we've asked them to produce, which will be, um, I, I know Oscar Lati do a fitting that's got a double, uh, a, a double rivet point. Right. I, we've got some ideas on a better fitting, uh, an adjustable end plug, and carrier screws are meant. To, these are meant to be, um, hopefully, moving towards production. Yeah. We tend to use only single grub screw fittings when they're under compression, but on any, when they're under tension, they're always doubles for us. Yeah, we. We, we double rivet anything when we got any concerns. So, like I say, any 32 millimeter bigger framework, they will be double riveted on their stainless rivets. But we, we want to go over to a, like I say, KO are meant to be, um, I need to chase them actually. It's been about a year in the process, but uh, 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 a better end plug. That adjustable end plug, rather than having to change the stay when you want longer lengths. If it's threaded correctly, we've got some ideas. Um, you can get all that adjustment on one fitting, and we want it. We want it to cap onto the tube with a, a, a much bigger socket, so it's more secure on the end of the tube. <clears throat> um, nice. I'm I'm going to have to go now, guys. In a minute, shortly. Otherwise, I'm going to be divorced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have but, to run as well. So this isn't a bad thing to do every now and then. Then um, we should talk about getting making this available uh, for people. Yeah, if you're yeah. recording anyway. Yeah, no, I, I've recorded it. Um, yeah, I'm, I feel really guilty with what's happened. I, I like I said, I, I trialed with the Facebook because that was a suggestion, um, and I, I was going to delete that video straight away. I didn't realize that one or two people had actually watched it. Um, 
but the quality you just couldn't see what was on the screen. So I reverted to Team Viewer, and I've used Team Viewer before, but not without these restrictions. Yeah, yeah. You can you can actually install Team Viewer, um, uh, firstly, and then and then switch over <laughs> to the test phase of of Team Viewer. Then you you probably won't have the uh, five person uh, limit in the presentation. I think it's That's... twenty five even for well, the uh, yeah, yeah. commercial. I think yeah. twenty five is. Because you you can test the, the the full commercial version, right? And I think the full commercial version only allows twenty five on a webinar. Yeah. I'm I'm sure there'll be a piece of software that's out there that will enable us to do this. Um, yeah. So we we, ju we just we just know we th there's a real value in doing this. And well, the Zoom free Zoom version is uh, is you get a hundred people. So I think that that would. So let let's trial that. Um, if 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 the the, the video cast and the if the quality is HD, you can see what I'm putting on screen, and that's right. um, that's that, that that's great. There's lots of our stuff online. If you if you just search um, the videos, I mean, some of it's pretty basic about repairs and little bits and pieces. Um, but there are the videos that I did for the MFA a few years ago, and th there's other bits of information that are out there as well. And the yeah. videos I showed you with a parametric design, they're, they're out there as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Good. Thanks, John. It's all doable, guys. You, you, it, it, like I said, I'm not saying it's not doable. It's just that uh, um, I, I could never have done this in one hit. If I, you know, won the lottery, go and buy the cutter, go and buy, unless I'm buying the person who knows how to use it all, um, it, it just, you know, Give yourself three months, learn that part, j just get to grips with it, move on to something else, move on to something else. Download Rhino. I'd really recommend it. It's free. Nobody else does that with their software. Will do. That, that's yeah. what I did. We, we um, okay, tell you a very quick story. We were looking at SolidWorks, so it was nothing about the price. SolidWorks is about six times the cost. Don't forget we're going back a number of years. Um, we had them into the into our offices, and I, I'm I'm always one for checking that a piece of kit will do what it says says it will do. I asked them to loft to a point. So what we mean by that? Imagine a, a tonneau cover where you stick a pole in. So you've got you've got a point. It couldn't produce a service. They couldn't do it. And there was one other attribute that SolidWorks couldn't do. And they came back about two years later and said we've incorporated this. We can now do this in the project. And I said, well, we're using Rhino, and it's about a sixth of the cost. Yeah. Why, why, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm so astonished why, why M-Panel and EasyFlat is so expensive compared to, to, to Rhino. Um, we, don't use, we, don't, we don't use any of them. Um, yeah. I had conversations with Exact Flat, and well, this is between us, their, their yeah. CEO and uh, Mark Jewell. We, I said, okay, we'll have a look. They wanted to, the CEO came in on the meeting and we flattened to a project, their way and our way. And we, our panels were exactly the same as theirs to the millimeter apart from one, which is majorly different. Exact flat was wrong. Mm. They had to go back and correct the program. It was a panel which very obviously couldn't be flattened. But we, it wasn't around. Well, not as far as I'm aware, when we started um, doing this. So we, we had to find other ways of doing it. And you can do it all within Rhino. Yeah. But what they're doing is it's, um, right, you're, 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 you're going to design in CAD. Um, no exact flat, no M panel, never used it. So we had to find a way to do it. Part, part of being able to produce um, what you saw, that first project, that's project. We had yeah. to be able to. We had to be able to flatten these panels. There was no exact flat. Yeah. Or we wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. So, um, yeah, M panel. That will be a good, good, good project for 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 seeing the mistakes uh, within the zippers or getting out the wrinkles. Yeah. Um, well, you you saw that that parametric Bimini design solution I showed you. So yeah. exact flat will 
not give you your seam allowances and match marks. But you saw there, just pressing one button on that program, actually produced all the pockets, not just the seam allowances and match marks, all the pockets, all the cut paths, all the reinforcing, all nested. So, you know, that's we're not we haven't written that for every project yet, and that took about two years. But we will be working on, you know, um, that 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 that's my intention to sort of deliver this on other. Uh, I I love writing that stuff now. I I, I like automating and just writing them, uh, you know, the, the parametric software that we we use. So, I mean, the, the Bimini one, I didn't even show you. Um, look at this, the colors. Hang on, two secs. Is all your umbrella colors? This will change in a second. Just give it a second. How cool is that? Yeah, that's good. So we've done that. We're using all I'm using now as a company to implement it into a web interface, into a website we're having written. So the concept with that is that a client can go online if they want a cheaper option, and they can design their own bimini, and it's working out the bill of materials in the background. So the price the price will amend. So they increase the height, length, width, change. You know the the frame, um, the number of frameworks, the size of the tube. The price will adjust, and they'll be able to buy the product online. And when they buy it. What happens off the back of that is we are emailed through the files to load to the machine to produce it. So it's no longer a, it's a custom product, but um, where's not, not really, even though we're given complete. So there are companies selling online Biminis, but you, you have to buy, do you buy 2.2 meters or do you go to the 2.4? What if you need 2.3? And what they don't give is any, any um, control over the height. So you could buy your bimini, yeah. but you can't stand up underneath it, or it's you know two foot above your head. So what we're what we're going to be able to do is the client will be able to. to we're looking probably to offer this to other companies that are non-competitors with a designated area where it can be um, embedded in a website. That's what we're going to do. So we've got yeah. a, this, like a um, bimini's for boats. Um, so when the client purchases, you uh, what comes in off the back of that is the files to, to produce that Bimini. You'd have to produce with our methods, you know, and our seam allowances and all of that. But that's, um, that's what we're looking to be able to do. So just to generate another income stream. Yeah. Very good. Okay, guys. All right. We'll hey, do thank again. you so much. Okay, you take right. care. It's good. To, oh, very quickly before we all go, um, yeah. well, I'm, I, I've got your your images here. I'm not sure who's who. <laughs> okay. Jeff. Jeff, right? That's great. I wasn't sure which one's which. Don't take offence. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> right, okay, let's there. wrap it up. Good, good to talk to you. All all. Bye then. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Sean. Cheers. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye.